In today's video, I'll be going over five powerful use cases of Claude Sonnet 3.5. If you haven't used Claude before, it is really, really good. And they just released 3.5 Sonnet, which is the best um, AI model in the world right now. In my opinion, it's much better than GPT-4.0. So there's a couple of new features that's included in Claude that I wanted to go over. The first one is going to be Claude Artifact. Let's say you wanted to create a one page landing page for my sales website, include a header, hero image, pricing, and a call to action section. So I'd enter that onto Claude. And as you can see, Claude will start um, giving us the output, but then it's going to start creating an artifact. So as we can see here on the right hand side, this is going to be the artifact. So essentially, Claude is going to dedicate this specific um, code to creating this um, specific output, which is going to be a one pager. So not only are you able to see it, um, you can see the code being done, but then you can also preview it. So we can preview what that page will look like. So this is pretty cool because we don't have to then go ahead and copy over the, the the code and then convert that we can actually see a preview of what, of what that looks like so obviously you can take a look at the code view but then again we can take a look at the preview view and this is right here um this is a pretty good solution for a one pager of course we would have to refine it with colors and things of that nature but just from a simple prompt we already have pricing we already have a call to action and we already have sort of the layout that we would need for a one page um, landing page so really really cool this is artifacts and you can use artifacts for anything if you're coding you can use artifacts to help you code if you're creating um, software if you're creating landing pages whatever you're doing you can use artifacts and as you can see it just makes it very very easy to interact with Claude and for Claude to essentially give you your outputs because if we didn't have the artifacts, then we would have all of the information on the left-hand side here. And sometimes that can be a lot to scroll through, um, like when you're using ChatGPT. So it's nice to have everything here on the right-hand side. And you can always speak to Claude. Uh, so we can tell it, redo, but include some colors. So it's being redone. And as you can see, it is adding in some colors into the code. And this is what the preview looks like. Pretty sweet, right? Um, very, very cool that we can create landing pages and create, you know, software or code or whatever we need to do very quickly using 3.5. And we can visually see that we can chat with it and it makes it very, very easy to build things using artifact. The next feature that I want to take a look at is the ability to upload docs, images, or files to Claude. So we can upload images, we can upload PDFs, we can upload documents, whatever it may be onto Claude. And then Claude will be able to read that information. So for example, I'm uploading a file here. And I can tell it to extract the main information from this file, right? And it will be able to read that information and extract it. So Claude is really good at following instructions and reading things. I find that sometimes if we do this with ChatGPT or GPT-4.0, it may not be able to read all of that information, but that's another pretty useful feature that we have included in Claude. Now let's actually go ahead and take a look at some other features that are a little bit less known. So what I do is you want to head over to the API console. This is the web interface and it's really good for when you're using artifacts. But if you wanted to generate content, I like using the API console. So before we actually use the API console, there's a couple of features here that's really good. Number one is going to be the prompt library. So the prompt library is going to be pre-made prompts that's been created by Anthropic or uh, prompts that have been uploaded by users. So this will give us an idea of different prompts in which we can um, get ideas for how to prompt content the right way to get our outputs that we are, are looking for. So this is the prompt library. You can search it up by different types of prompts or we can filter by using the filter on the right hand side or you can simply just scroll down and choose whichever prompt you would like to see. So for example, let's say I wanted to use the storyteller sidekick. I can click on that prompt and then I'll be able to see the details of this prompt. So we can see what the system prompts will be, the user and a, an example. We can see the system prompt, the user and an example output and the API request. We can also see what that looks like if you are building um, your own tool and you would like to integrate that into, um, into your software. So pretty cool. You can actually go ahead and take a look at various um, prompts. There's a bunch of different prompts here that you can use. You can click on any one of those and then you can get the details for that specific prompt. The next feature that I want to discuss is also a little known feature, which allows you to actually generate a prompt. So for example, I can tell it to, 
I want you to draft an email responding to a customer complaint and offer a, re a resolution. This is the output or the objective in which I'm going after. And then I can use this tool to actually generate a prompt that I can use to write the content. And of course, the AI is going to be really good because the AI knows how to talk to the AI. So it will give you a prompt here that you can use. Um, and then you can use this prompt to then generate your content. So we can start editing and this will take us to the API console or we can discard. So let's discard this. So for example, let's say I wanted to create an SEO optimized blog post. That could be um, the objective in which I'm going after and then I tell the AI to create a prompt for me. And as you can see, it's gonna create a very, very detailed prompt, right? So this is the topic, this is the target audience, word count and so on. And this is the full uh, prompt in which you can use. So these prompts are really good. I've tried it out for myself. Once you like it, you can click start editing and then this will take you into the API console. And if you haven't used the API console before, this is what it looks like. You have the system settings, you have the user, and then you can actually generate content like you would in the playground mode. There's also a couple of new features. There's the evaluate. So this allows you to evaluate or for you to test between different responses and different models. So if you actually wanted to generate a test case, we can click that and it will generate to you content based upon different models. So you can decide which model you like the best for your specific um, for your specific use case. So we have the topic, the target audience, and the word count, and then the model response will give us output based upon the models in which we use, and then we can grade that, and that can be how we can sort of compare different models. So as you can see, there's a lot of really, really powerful features included in Claude. You just need to take some time to explore it, um, and they're always coming out with very new, innovative, and effective um, tools and features that we can use to help us write much better content. So if you haven't used Cloud before, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Just head over to anthropic.com. You can sign up. Cloud is available in most countries, so it should be pretty easy for you to get access to it. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.